when you look at the word covenants, right? We had the laws before the covenant was made. The law, the covenant was through sacrifice. That's what he's about to bring out now. The laws are one thing. We had the laws during the time of Adam. Adam received laws. You understand that? So there was no covenant in place. The laws were always there. The covenant was with sacrifice. So when he said he one had to decease so he could increase, meaning the way you atone for those sins, the law is still in place. The covenant is no longer in place. That covenant is with sacrifice. I'm going to show you something real quick. Hebrews 8 and 8. That's what happened. That's what happened. I'm going to show it to you real quick. The book of Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. For finding fault with them. So, being the them is the nation of Israel. Again, he's about to pull it out for you in Psalm 50. For finding fault with them. For finding error with these people. Read. He saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. When will I make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah? He said, For finding fault with them, I'm going to make a new covenant. Right? What was the new covenant? What did Christ say about that new covenant? This is the blood, right? This wine is in representation of my blood, right? This bread is broken for my body, right? This do in remembrance of me, right? Representing the covenant, right? So what Christ did, he made himself the ultimate sacrifice. You see what I'm saying? The law, the covenant had nothing to do with the laws, is the way we atone. Now we don't offer an animal, Christ is the offer. So when he said, thou shalt not steal, that still applies, correct? Yes, See, what I want you to do is separate the, the, the doctrine that we heard in the church saying, Christ fulfilled these things. Because to say that is to say, Christ fulfilled, thou shalt not steal. Christ fulfilled, thou shalt not commit adultery. Christ fulfilled, thou shalt not kill. Right. Christ fulfilled, honor your mother and your father. No, no. You wouldn't agree with that, would you? So now when it comes down to keeping the beard, which is also a part of those laws, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. How do we say Christ fulfilled, you don't have to wear a beard? You see what I'm saying? No, I, I it doesn't know. mesh. Because when you read, when you go back into Exodus 20, right? You read the Ten Commandments. If you read, keep reading, it continues with laws. It doesn't stop and say, well, this is it. The other laws follow behind it. If I see your ass go astray, my job as a neighbor to you is to go and retrieve it and bring it back. That's a part of the Ten Commandments. Right. Of what? Thou should not steal. Me taking a woman and forcing her to lie down with me goes into the law of what? Thou should not kill. So when you look at the other laws, they encompass within the Ten Commandments. The laws of the Ten Commandments are not done away with. They encompass in two. Thou should love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right. On those two commandments hang on all the laws. Right. So we got to be careful when we say Christ fulfilled those things. He did fulfill it. He fulfilled the things that was written about him. It was prophesied in Psalms 22 that he will be crucified. It is prophesied in Isaiah 53 that he will be smitten by the shepherds right. and he will be and by his stripes we will be healed. Right. Those are the things that he fulfilled, not the law. You understand? Today, I tell you one thing, right? Today is one of the most important days that we were given out of all the high holy days that, that you can read in the Bible. You know what that, you know what that is? The Day of Atonement. You ever heard of it? I you know. Are you fasting today? Today, this is the stuff we're missing. But where have we learned Christ to fill these things if we don't have to keep them? Whoever told you that got you disobeying or breaking the law of the Day of Atonement. Christ said, who wants who? who God said, who, the, who doesn't ever afflict his soul in that self same day should be cut off from among the people. Now that's old covenant. But that law still applies. You're supposed to be fasting. You see that? You keep Christmas? You don't do no any pagan dollars. You celebrate birthdays? Birthdays? No. Memorial Day, none of that stuff, right? No. No. So if you put down those things, understand that they were pagan, right? Why not pick up uh, Zonk God on high holy days? If you put down those things, why not lift up his? Like I don't. Like I don't. The day is the day of atonement. Are you fasting? That's what I'm saying, brother. That's why you met us today. That's why you met us today. 
I'm gonna go. I'm gonna Finish go. Finish the second. I gotta go. I gotta go. I appreciate y'all. And uh, I hope some good things. And uh, maybe I'll see y'all soon. Hold on, hold on. He ain't getting Psalm 50 yet, David. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on brother David. Let me just read this last scripture. Because right. remember, the Bible says to prove all things. That's not what I'm saying. It's supposed to be reading. Because I understand you believe in the Bible. I, I see that. But it's been it's being taught incorrectly. How do you know me? By the conversation we're having, what's your nationality? What's your nationality? David, just listen to this real quick, David. Read that real quick. Read it out loud. Joshua 6. Book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 55. 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is the covenant that he made with our ancestors. This is the covenant he made with, 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 with uh, Moses, with, John, with, 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 um, with Aaron, with those in the wilderness. Yeah, it's gonna keep, it's gonna come back home by the right. over here. This is the message that we come out here to teach our people. The laws of God are not done away with. Go back to Matthew chapter five, verse 17. Bring it up. This is why we live in a neighborhood called Crime Hills. It and it's called Pine Hills, because we are still under sin. Read that real quick. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Come on. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So Christ said he did not come to destroy the law or the prophets, the prophecies that was written about him. He came to fulfill those that's written about him. Right. And we're going to read a prophecy that was fulfilled about him. Give me Acts chapter 5, verse 32. Bring it out. Stop verse 29. We're going to go back to uh, Matthew. We're going to read a prophecy that Christ came and fulfill. Read from verse 29. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, Come on. We ought to obey God rather than men. Uh -huh. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Read that again. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Well, verse 29 again. Verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said. So we're reading about Peter and the other apostles that was taught by Jesus Christ. Read. We ought to obey God rather than men. They told us obey God, not what man has taught us. Right. Meaning come out of the Bible. Prove it by the Bible. Read. That's right. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. The God of our fathers. Abraham is not the forefathers of all nations. Read. Whom he slew and hanged on the tree. They killed Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, hung him on a cross. Right. Used by wood, which is the tree. Read. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. So God raised up Jesus Christ to be a prince and a savior. How you doing, my brother? You know who Christ came and died for? One second at a time, brother. One second at a time. Our people don't want to hear the truth. Our people rather walk around and just smile. But guess what? Whether they're here or forbid, you're going to hear the truth. Right. Read. Right. For to give repentance to Israel. No, to everybody. For to give repentance to Israel. This is what Jesus Christ fulfilled. He died on the cross to give repentance to who? To Israel! Please. And forgiveness of sins! And forgiveness of sins! This is why Jesus Christ came and died. This is what he fulfilled. The laws of God are not destroyed. Thou shalt not kill. That still stands. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's still in effect. Right. All those laws are still in effect. Right. Go back to Matthew chapter 5. Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, came and died for his people. Right. So that they would have a chance to repent from their sins. Yeah. Right. Matthew 5, verse 17. Uh -huh. Think not till I come to destroy the law or the prophets. Christ said he did not come to destroy the law. Thou should not kill. Why would he destroy that? That makes no sense. To this day, we should not kill. We should not steal. Right. We should not be covetous. We should not be committing adultery. Right. We should right. not be in shrimp, crab, crab, pork, and lobster. Right. Read. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But he came to fulfill the prophecies that was written about him. He lived them out. Read. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one shot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. So he said, until everything's been fulfilled. One thing has not been fulfilled, he has not returned a second time. Right. So nothing else has been fulfilled. Read. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. So if you're breaking one of the least commandments, like the laws of the dietary law, right. the laws of the dress code, the Sabbath day, right. today being one of them. Right. Read. And shall teach men so. And you teach men, not only by your words, but by your actions. Read. 
He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. You're going to be called the least, meaning you get no kingdom. Read. But whosoever shall do and teach them. But the ones that do the laws of God, teach the laws of God, be an example to their communities. Read. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. You're right. going to be called great in the kingdom of heaven as okay. to come on earth. To you that accept your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Ye shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. How you doing, my sister? Oh, he's showing you Northern Kingdom history. I'm guessing so-called Puerto Rican. All right. I want you to look at this sign real quick. Because Puerto Rico, it means rich port, right? Who gave you that name? Who conquered the island of Puerto Rico? Columbus, Christopher Colon, right? And you know why he called it rich port? You can say it. You're around your brothers. It's fine. Not only that, but it was filled with riches. Rich in produce, like right now. Why do you think a lot of governments come into your island and take the natural resources and import it into places like America or England, right? For the riches, for the benefit. When he came, go back to during 20 and 49. When he came, he called it rich port because he instituted a law that said you had to bring all the gold. If you didn't bring a certain amount of quart of gold, he chopped off limbs, he chopped off fingers, he bashed babies' heads against rocks took your mothers and your fathers and hung them up by the baker's dozen. It's just 13 people, that's where they get that from. He forced Christianity, Catholicism on us. That's what he forced on us. We didn't know that then. They told Asiola, do you want the kingdom of heaven? Asiola said, well, is it filled with people like you? No. They forced that on us. God does not do this. That's not in the Bible. You understand that? Read this real quick. The prophecy that affected you because if your father's um, so-called Puerto Rican, according to the Bible, you are your father. You have to see that your father, you'll be from the tribe of Ephraim. Right. You ever heard of Joshua? Joshua's from the tribe of Ephraim. Those are your ancestors, That's according right. to the Bible. That's why the Bible says don't have Puerto Rican in it. It don't have African-American, West Indian. It got Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Right. Right. Those are the names God gave us. But we no longer know our name due to slavery. Right. or being renamed, just like your island was renamed. Read that real quick. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 49. Uh -huh. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flying. Hold up the sign for me. So the prophecy said, right, that God would bring a nation from far. The conquistadors came from Europe, from a very far distance. And they came into the islands, right? And they spoke a language that your ancestors did not understand. Your ancestors actually spoke a dialect of Hebrew. You ever heard of Boricuan? That is a Hebrew word. It means great Lord. Boricua is what they call the island. Right? But when he came, read that verse again. From the end of the earth, uh -huh. as swift as the eagle flying. And God shows us he would carry a symbol. It's got the eagle on it. Give me the other side. As swift as the eagle flying. The Greeks had an eagle as a symbol. The Romans and the Spanish, the Portuguese, they used the eagle as a symbol. Uh -huh. right. The eagle is a bird of prey because he swooped down and comes up on you without you knowing. Uh -huh. Your ancestors woke up one day and saw a white man in the shoulders of their coats. Uh -huh didn't know where they came from and welcomed them in because they were inviting people. Right. They saw them shipwrecked and tried to give them help. And how were they repaid? With death and violence, right? Bring it out. Keep reading. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Didn't understand the language that they were speaking. They forced that language on you. That's why right now, if you notice, some Mexicans speak a different language of Spanish. Puerto Ricans speak a different language or uh, dialect. Yeah, certain words. You say some words in uh, Puerto Rico, you get, they get disrespected in so-called Mexico, right? Keep reading. A nation of fierce countenance, uh -huh. which shall not regard the person of the old, uh -huh. nor show favor to the young. Whether you're old or young, all of us was doing this, going for the gold, picking all the produce, bringing that back to Columbus. It didn't matter what you, how you doing, brother? Come over here real quick. We're going to buy history, brother. We're going to buy history. The history of your ancestors and her ancestors. Because, what's your name again, sis? Vanessa, what's your name? Stevenson, where are you from, Stevenson? Haiti, y'all both went through the same oppression. Am I making that up? No. The French did it to you, the conquistadors did it to her, the Portuguese. As a matter of fact, the Portuguese came to your island before the French. That's why half of it is called Dominican Republic, Dominica, right? It was originally called Hispaniola. And the other half, mind you, it's one island, but there's an imaginary line. The other land is called what? Haiti, or Haitian. Haitian is not even a French word. The indigenous people started calling it that after they were oppressed. You understand? So we're going to be in history right now with the history. Read that verse again. Verse 50. 28 verse 50. Uh -huh. A 
nation of this countenance, uh -huh. which shall not regard the person of the old, uh -huh. nor show favor to the young. Whether you are old or young, we were all in the plantations, whether in Haiti or Puerto Rico, picking and bringing all our livestock, all our produce to this oppressor that came from another land. Am I correct? Even to this very present day. Trump just went over there the other day, right? Shooting paper towels at our brothers and sisters, calling it a shithole country, excuse my language. But that's what he called it. He didn't provide no help whatsoever. Right. You understand that? Keep reading. Verse 51, Deuteronomy 28, 51. Uh -huh. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle uh -huh. and the fruit of thy land. So he ate all the natural resources from your land to this very present day. They still export resources from your land and you barely see the benefits of it. Bill Clinton, your animal is filled with rice farm. People on his own rice for a lower price and killed your community. Killed your animal.
shall a man put on a woman's garment. So now it's talking about clothing. Neither shall a man put on a woman's clothing. What are some things that are women's clothing? All right, All right. Dresses, shoes, and scarves. Because, for example, in the restroom, right? You got a man restroom and a woman restroom, right? right. How do you know the difference? Huh? A skirt, right? So this, your brother right here should not be putting on a skirt, should he? Or a dress, right? Because God said he hates it, right? Right. Read the top part. But the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So what shouldn't a righteous Israelite sister not be wearing that belongs to a man? Pants, right? Not, it's, it's, it's not to demean you. It's fine because check this out. That's a culture shock. Right. Keep it real with you. I got daughters, and I was like, I never thought, like, clothing. I never knew that. Do they teach you why though? They go into the law and show you the law. Now, even with Baptists and Pentecostals. Ah, uh, there you go. Minus of power. Give me Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. I'm going to show you the reason why. Because right now, keep it real. Most men out here, most men out here, and you two is all my brother. When you look at a woman, what are the first things a man sees? That, that's the truth, right? Right. What shows off those features? What kind of clothes? You're right, that's called bikinis at the beach. You're absolutely right. But what else though? Pants, right? It shows up her courage, her figure, right? Now this is what happens to the brother. Or sister for that matter. Yeah. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Uh -huh. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So they will say we should not commit adultery, the actual act of sleeping with another man's wife, right? Come on. But I say unto you uh -huh. that whosoever looketh on a woman uh -huh. to lust after her, for what? to lust after her, he hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So now, if the sister has on pants showing up a figure, he just woke up, came outside, he looked at her, what you think just happened? He committed lust. He committed lust, right? In his heart, in his mind. Now he's designing her not for the for wife, he's designed for a one night stand. Right. And we wonder why we got so many broken households. Right. This is why he gave us a dress code. Not only to distinguish us from the other nations, but to keep our nation righteous and holy. Right. Y'all understand? So that this brother would not have lustful um, thoughts in his mind. Right. Give me um, Leviticus real quick. Let me go to Timothy. Leviticus 19. I'm going to show you. You're putting on a dress right now, sis. It actually helps the men in your community not to have sin upon them. Right. That's the love in the Bible that God told us. We should yeah. have. That we didn't have is why we're on the bottom right now. This is what you do when you put on that modest dress like you would say, right? And now that brother doesn't look at you for curves and figures, but he looks at you to try to get to know you. Right, right, right. So he can have find out is she a, can she be a good mother? Can she be a good wife? Does she does she want to have children? Does she want to have a life together? Right. The good quality. Read Leviticus 19 verse 17. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Uh -huh. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor uh -huh. and not suffer sin upon him. And what? And not suffer sin upon him. So by putting on that modest apparel, you're not allowing sin to be on your brother because now in his mind, he no longer has to look at Vanessa and think about lust. He right. can look at Vanessa and think, man, could that be my wife? Could that be the mother of my children? Could I die old and if I die, she take care of them? You understand my sister? That is the spirit behind that law. Right. That is the spirit why he gave us a dress code. And that's also some of the laws that we broke back then. Right. You understand my sister? So now, so now that you find out that you're supposed to be wearing um, a dress, right? Are you going to keep doing that from here on? Because that's all that matters. Me showing you that that's God's word, all that matters is your actions. That's what you're going to be judged by. That's right. You understand that? And we're doing this out of love because check it out. I don't want to see you in sin. Right. You probably didn't know that. I don't know. He probably not knew that. So we bring out the law. You acknowledge it. You heard it before. Now you're seeing the reason why. Right. It's not, not only for you, but it's for all the men in the community. You have children? Boys, girls? All girls, and I all daughters to myself. How would you like a man looking at your daughters for the wrong reason? Awesome, right? So now you got to be an example. Let me tie this real quick. So now you got to be an example for those daughters because you know as well as I do. As much as we correct our children, they're going to pay attention to our example. Right. Right. So we can't be hypocrites for our children. Because they're going to look at mommy and daddy like, well, he said don't do this, but he's doing it too. He said don't take the cookie out of the cookie jar, but he's doing it too. Right. We got real quick. You got the title. Book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 2. That the aged men, 2 and verse 3. The 
age women likewise. That they be in behavior. And what? That they be in behavior. Behavior, that's the way you carry yourself, right? The way you speak, the way you talk, the way you dress, the way you adorn yourself. Come right. on. Right. As becoming holiness. As becoming holiness. Holiness means separate. Okay. Not like how fashion tells us. Right. Fashion is say, that's a woman's pants. But when Young Thug puts them on, it's a man's pants. Right. Bring it out. That makes absolutely no sense. Because they be wearing some of the tightest clothing right now, too. Which they shouldn't be. But you get what I'm getting at, right? An aged woman, an older woman, right? She should be dressed modestly, right? Holy, come on. Not false accusers. They shouldn't be liars. Right now, a lot of our sisters run up and down, blah, 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 causing all kind of controversy, especially on social media, right? Come on. Not giving too much wine. It don't mean they can't drink, but they shouldn't be drunk. Yet. A lot of our sisters get drunk, they go downtown, they end up being what? Baby mamas, one night stand, come on with an STD, really? Teachers of good things. They said what? Teachers of good things. So now, I, the, the Israelite woman's role in your role, Vanessa, in your household, is to be a teacher of good things. That's right. That they may teach the young woman to teach who? To teach the young woman uh -huh. to be sober, uh -huh. to love their husbands, uh -huh. to love their children. To what? To love their children. A part of loving your child is being an example to the child. Right. Your child may say, Mom, why are you wearing dresses? Why we gotta wear dresses? Right. Now you can go in the Bible and show them, sweetie, that's God's laws. We love God's laws because we love God. Right. You understand? To be discreet. To be what? To be discreet. Being discreet. How you doing, my brother? Come over here real quick. You're going over your history right now, bro. Hey, come on, man. You ain't got nowhere to go. You know that too, man. To be what? To be discreet. Uh -huh. Chase. Keepers at home. Keepers at home. To be chased and discreet. Covered up in modest apparel. Right. right. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. Uh -huh. That the word of God be not blasphemed. So when our sisters are putting on that modest apparel, they're making sure the word of God is not blasphemed. Right. They're not turning the word of God into a lie. Because the word of God said if a woman is dressed modestly, she makes sure sin is not being brought upon her brother by a lustful way. Right. right. You understand? Yeah. How, how y'all doing? Yeah. Check out the back of the fire, right, Vanessa? Yeah. All right? Remember, you're an Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim. That's right. Not Puerto Rican. Right. Better than that. Right. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.